Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Eight Beyond Forever Sports and a very interesting article and interview being given by Hachiba Diamani saying that he believes that he is ready and that this year is his year to potentially break into the Springbok squad. And I'll tell you what, Ben, on problem in the last few years, he's pretty right to say it. Um, but uh, it was quite interesting and insightful interview, uh, which I thought would be a good uh, video to do. Did you kind of just talk about how we sort of pigeonhole players and uh, how often, for example, we also don't... Um, let these opinions shift, you know, and once we sort of have a general idea about a player or also a preconceived idea about a player, that kind of ends up being sort of the only way we think about them. And uh, I think that this interview, as well as the way that the Shiba Diamond is playing lately, it sort of reminds us that, you know, you can't pigeonhole players and that you need to be, you know, open to to admitting that that certain players can sort of change their roles and uh, and can adapt to, to, to new... Um, uh, possibilities. So before we sort of go into the, the, the article and uh, talk about whether or not he could, for example, suit the box and where, for example, he could potentially play, uh, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right. So uh, Achiba Daimani has played uh, age group um, rugby for sort of within the SA school system. He played for SA schools. Um, he was involved in the um, the seven setup as well for a bit, although I don't think he actually ever officially played a, an international tournament for this for the bits box. Um, so he's sort of been been there and there about. Um, and the next, um, in his next sort of protocols, obviously 15-man Springbok. And uh, I mean, he's been one of the star players for the Stormers in their sort of region. So it's probably a name that hasn't come, maybe come up enough with regards to sort of being a potential contention. Uh, but this is what he had to say about uh, the idea. Uh, he said, I've been playing Super Rugby since 2017 and I've been an up-and-coming player for almost eight years. Uh, he said, I'm just trying to change that, that I'm a player to look out for and to break that ceiling. Hopefully I can reach greater heights. Um, I think that sort of idea of an upcoming player is is very is very true. He's 26 years old, uh, turned 27 this year, so he's still pretty young. But um, because his sort of career has sort of floated around a little bit, he's had to sort of go to the Stormers, sort of almost reinvent himself a little bit. Um, you know, he's, he's not considered a veteran, for example, despite the fact that he has been playing, um, you know, since sort of 2017, he's been playing for, for many years. Um, but uh, he's only sort of really settled in and been sort of a, a regular starter and a key player for about two or three seasons now. Um, he said that if the Bok dream doesn't come, um, it won't be the end of the world. I'll keep improving. Um, but what was very interesting about this whole interview is he spoke about where he believes um, people don't rate him and where he needs to improve. He said, um, based on how the Stormers play and with Evan Ruiz in the middle, I, will always play, um, I was always in the wide channels. He says, now the coaches and I have decided that's the that's that the tight sort of the loose loose areas um where i need to prove because that's the perception of me that i'm a guy who just wants to be in the wide channels do the offloads and fancy passing but i shy away when it comes to the hard yards uh, in the games against zebra la rochelle and bulls there were a few moments where you're starting to see that i'm trying to be in the trenches or what it, or where it's hot as we call it it's part of my game and i'm working on trying to show um he says also looking at uh, changing sort of uh the way that ball carriers are looked at he said, there's a perception in rugby that in order to be a good ball carrier, you have to run into people. They don't look at the meters made and the defenders beaten. They look at the physicality of running into players as what makes you a good ball carrier. When I look at my stats, I always looked at defenders beaten, how many meters I made. And I always thought I was a good ball carrier based on that. But other people think otherwise. So I want to show people that I can be in those hot places on the rugby field and that I can mix the two to become a complete rugby player. And I think he's nailed on, pretty much nailed on, 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 on uh, hit the nail on the head there. Really, because he is a player that um, doesn't run over players. He's not an Evan Ruiz, a an Albert Lowe, a Cameron Honeycomb. Uh, you know, he does first of all like to operate in the wide areas, and there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of great men are very good at it. Franco Horn is very good at doing that. Um, but I think that sort of that 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 ball carrier is is very good. Now, a lot of people dismiss this by saying, you know, to play international rugby, for example, you have to have that physicality. Um, and to be fair, I think if you watched him this season, you know, the way he's developed to handle, for example, he's getting through contact. And I think that's the main thing, you know. Yes, international defense are obviously a lot, uh, a, a lot uh, better. For example, there's not always as much space. But if you're getting through contact, you're making post-contact meters, then you're doing your job as a ball carrier. And uh, I also think, you know, the idea of being in the trenches is is also something inherent in playing for Springboks. You have to be a grafter. You have to get stuck into the do the messy work. And I really like the fact he's identified those as areas where people might not be seeing him in, and that he's making a very conscious effort. To make sure we get into those areas to try and prove a point. So the question is, will this be enough? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I think he offers a lot for the box, to be honest. I think that 
you know, you look at the explosiveness of a Quaker Smith who's so good over the ball, for example, and, and how the fact that they managed to make that specific skill set work for the box. I don't see why we can't make Diamani work for the box. Uh, we talk about a 7-1 split, for example. He's got the pace. He can play in the back line. Uh, he can play basically across that back three. So a very dynamic player. And uh, that sort of utility uh, and versatility has always been so precious for the box. So in that sense, I don't see why potentially you couldn't make, potentially, uh, make that call up. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.